Dr. Fizz with Theoretical Physics, Modern Physics Revisited. Well, let's look at Einstein's nice little triangle here, which helps us understand his formula. That E squared is equal to M squared C to the fourth plus P squared C squared. So you can think of this as the energy at the particle is at rest. If there's no momentum, P goes to zero, angle goes to zero, and E is just along that horizontal line, E equals MC squared. Now if you have momentum, then you have this leg here in the y or vertical direction and use the Pythagorean theorem to get the energy. Well, what about light? Well, light is traveling at the speed of light, which means this angle is going to get bigger and bigger, right, and be 90 degrees so that the energy is all PC. Wow, that's interesting. So that's saying that the mass of light particle, a light particle is equal to zero. Well, let's let's go with this. Now, the energy we also know from Einstein is HF. So this is interesting. Einstein relativity is giving us this. Einstein with his photoelectric effect is giving us this. And this is kind of the best of both worlds of modern physics, the world of the fast and the world of the microscopic, which we look at as modern physics. So we have this nice equation here, E equals PC equals HF from Einstein two points of view. Now let's look at this a little more carefully. In the general case, E equals MC squared divided by this square root, and aren't we going to be in trouble if the speed of light is reached here because then C squared over C squared will equal 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0 and you can't divide by 0. But we know the energy of light is finite, but we also know the energy of light can be anything. F can be anything. So here you could have energy for radio waves, gamma rays, x-rays, so wait a minute. Here the mathematics is helping us understand this because the mathematics is suggesting that if you want your have your cake and eat it, if you want to have a particle going the speed of light, then you better have its mass to be zero. Because if its mass is zero, then indeterminate form comes to the rescue. Zero over zero. Well, you know, zero over zero, you could have like two x over x if x goes to zero. Well, two x over x, the x will cancel before you get to zero, and then you take the limit and you say the limit's two. See, and then three x over over x the limit would be 3. See, So here by having a 0 over 0 form we can think of this as taking a limit and having a defined limit and it could be anything. So it really fits nicely here. This is a rather mathematical argument but remember mathematics can help us understand the physics and both math and physics must work together. So the rest mass, sometimes they say rest mass uh, for M to emphasize it but we can just say mass because that's what we mean. A, a particle's mass is a particle's mass. In some old books on relativity, they, they talk about relativistic mass. We're not doing that. M for us is always the rest mass. And for a photon, the rest mass is zero. And we have these results. Now, if we look, if we look uh, further here at the wave relation, which says the speed of light is the wavelength times the frequency, we could use that in conjunction with these other formulas. And when we do that, we get this neat result by plugging in for the speed of light, lambda times f, the f's cancel, and we get the momentum times the wavelength of light equals h, and this beautiful, elegant relationship which relates the wave aspects of light to the particle aspects of light. Since the momentum is can be thought of as like a particle aspect, something's coming, like a truck's coming at you with some momentum. And here is the wavelength, a nice relationship, and comes along De Broly and says, hey, I think that applies to matter also. Like what? Yeah, matter has momentum, like say MV, just plug it in, get a wavelength. That's a big, big surprise. In fact, here we have two big surprises now. One, light, which was thought to be a wave classically, is also a particle. And now a particle, which was thought to be matter classically, is also a wave with de Broglie's idea. De Broglie's idea there 
uh, were they weren't sure what to do with that. The thesis advisor and Einstein was sent to pay for Einstein. Yeah, give him, give him a PhD. Then he got a PhD and eventually Nobel Prize. And here is then the summary of modern physics using these key equations. Modern physics is the world of the fast and the world of the small. This is what's traditionally taught in the modern physics course. This is relativistic modern physics, which we're going to get to in our course later. So x equals ct, a key equation which emphasizes that c, there is a speed of light that's constant. So it doesn't matter if you have x prime and t prime, the c will be constant. That's our key equation for the relativistic regime, the world of the fast. And then we'll use the Broglie's relation here and also the relation that came from Einstein for light as this applies to both light and particle as a key equation for the microscopic uh, realm and of course we use F equals MA for classical physics and we're going to see later in this chapter that the F equals MA for this area here is the Schrodinger equation.